I was a Shawnee native. I went to OBU. Um, I graduated from OBU, and I was um, apprenticed by a professor there. And so in class, we decided, wouldn't it be cool if we started a business? This is 1993 to show my age, okay? Um, a little older than some of you. But uh, we're sitting in class. Wouldn't it be cool if we went, if we started a company in Russia, in Moscow? And uh, the walls had just fallen down. The Soviet Union had just imploded. And so we were, six months later, we were living, I was living in Russia. And we started uh, an economic school, which is now the largest private school in Moscow. We started a marketing consulting business. Um, and we started an accounting training company. And one of the things I love about Oklahoma, uh, if you haven't been to the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, you need to go there. On the second floor of the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, there's this whole section about famous Oklahomans, and there's five categories that describe what an Oklahoman is. And it's really, really inspiring. But one of them is pioneer. And it's this idea of who says you can't? Who says you can't? And so we were Oklahomans. I was 21 years old, moving to Russia, starting three companies. And we had this attitude of, who says we can't? We really were clueless. We didn't know what we were doing. But we did it. And so that's kind of the attitude that I've kind of had most of my life. I uh, moved back to Oklahoma City because of the Oklahoma City bombing. My father-in-law was in the bombing. And it brought us back. And we eventually bought a company, John Maxwell's Assets, 2007, and moved to Atlanta. Merged those into Giant after we had started Giant. Then uh, moved to, um, to Europe, moved to London, and established our European operations. And so now we operate in about 14 or so countries. Um, we have about 140 people in our Giant world. And we operate our global business from Oklahoma City, which is like, what? So most people don't understand this, but uh, we, were in, we were in London. We lived, just a side note, I'm sorry, this is, sounds like a personal thing, but we lived in a really cool place. It was on the River Thames, um, right between London and Oxford. We uh, lived in an old manor built in 1583 uh, called the Headster Priory. And uh, we had three kids. We were tutoring the kids. We had tutors, and then we were uh, homeschooling kind of both. And we were traveling and, and kind of establishing our European stuff, so our kids, decided they wanted to come to, um, they want to come to Oklahoma, or sorry, come to, back to America for high school. And so we decided, all right, let's come back. There's five cities that we can run our operations from. Atlanta, Nashville, DC, Denver, or Oklahoma City. And uh, I gave the kind of the majority wins with, I have three kids and my wife. Three out of four chose Oklahoma City. And I was like, no, no, you didn't hear me. Um, Denver. <laughs> Denver and Nashville. Did, I mean, Denver, you know, and I'm showing the slideshow in Denver, and then <laughs> I'm kind of joking, but three out of four, my youngest daughter wanted to go to Atlanta, the rest of them wanted to come to Oklahoma City. Which basically, but we wouldn't have come back if it hadn't had the renaissance that we've experienced. We wouldn't have been able to move back and operate a global business. Our, our offices are at Tower Theater, just on the second floor of Tower Theater on 23rd Street, but we wouldn't have been able to do that if it hadn't been all of the work that many of you had put in to the renaissance of Oklahoma City. So for us, people always ask, OK, Atlanta, London, Oklahoma City, like why? Did you retire? Or is that, what's the, like, no, 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 there's good things happening here. There's amazing things happening here. And the reason that it's happening here is the word that's on the screen, intention. If you think about it. Our cities, um, oftentimes I'll go and do a little tour at Devon Tower. I'll go all the way to the top. I'll bring some, we, uh, we bring all of our training from around the world, we bring them here at Oklahoma City. We do it at the top of Devon Tower. And they're freaked out because they're like, Oklahoma City is cool. This is amazing. Because they're not e expecting it. And so we get up there and we do this little tour and I show them regions and area. And I said, do you understand that Oklahoma City, the renaissance we're experiencing is all based on catastrophe. The 1995 bombing is what incubated a desire for, it united the leaders and the funding that came in with that, and it gave them this idea, you know what, we've got our shot. Um, Ronald Reagan once said, never waste, never miss uh, chaos. Don't miss any, um, any chaotic moment. Actually do something with it. So we had a chaotic moment in Oklahoma City. The negative of the bombing created a unification of the people and the word intention started. I think we probably were living a little bit unintentional as a city. And because of that, it actually unified. And when the unification came an intentional game plan. 
And the game plan was, if they had Devon Tower back then, they're looking around going, wouldn't it be cool if we did this here, and that here, and this here? Wouldn't it be cool if we could do, and so when you look at our city, there, there, do you realize people are coming in to study Oklahoma City? Because of the intentionality of leadership, civic leadership, local leadership, all types of leaders getting together looking to do something far greater, which is called vision. So intention is the word, and let me, let me share the definition of intention. So intention, which is kind of fun if you want to actually pronounce it like that, if you would with me. Intention, right? Let's try it one more time. Intention, yeah. This just sounds funny when you see it like that. Intention is an act or instance of determining mentally upon some action or result. Okay, that's just funny. That's the Webster's Dictionary. But to go, the act or instance of determining mentally, right? To do something. So determining, meaning having a game plan. And intention is directly related to vision. Vision is what makes intention happen or not. But I'm gonna give you, sometimes I like to want to describe it word, I like to do the opposite. So what's the opposite of intention or intentional? Don't say unintentional, okay? <laughs> accidental, accidental. So here's what an accident is. Accidental is the happening without intent or through carelessness and often with unfortunate results. So it's been my experience in life and working with leaders and people around the world is that most people are accidental. It's just the simple fact. Most people are accidental and only the very, very few are intentional. And sometimes intentional gets a bad rap because it feels too formal and I kind of like, you know, I kind of like do my thing, you know what I mean? I just want to roll with things. I don't want to be forced into doing something. Well, intention is basically the act of when you decide to do something with that vision you have in your head. That's what intention is. Intention is to say, I have a dream, and now I'm going to do something about it. Most people have a dream and then live accidentally. They have intention, but they haven't put it into, or, or they have the idea, but they haven't taken the idea and put it into a mental calibration, a mental blueprint for, to make it happen. Are you guys following me? So we have switches on our back. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah, come here, Sarah. Do you mind being my, my uh, uh, guest for a minute? For the prop? Okay, can you turn around, look that way? Okay, Sarah has a lever back here, and it's just a, it's a light switch. It's like a dimmer switch. And it goes up or it goes down, okay? And it's just really simple. It's called the intentional switch. And you can actually turn it up, and when it turns it up, her life will look different. Most people, I'm not saying you, Sarah, but most people have their switch all the way down. Okay, thank you. you can do, Every one of you have one of those switches. I know it's a little cheesy, but to go, I'm not asking you to switch it on yourself. But sometimes you need other people to help you move it up. And so what happens in life is to go, intentional happens in every circle. So in our business, let's see here. In our business, we use visual tools and we create vocabulary because most people don't remember things. Uh, I write books for a living. I just sent in this morning. Um, seven chapters of 11 chapter book to Wiley, to our publisher. So that's what I was doing this morning before this, because it's due today. And so um, <laughs> it's really important. But I've been intentional with this vision and now I've created my fifth book because I have a vision. So then vision dictates what happens. Well, most people think about intentionality in one circle, but they might be living accidentally in another circle. And if I had to leave you with any big aha today, it would be being intentional in every circle. You might have your dimmer switch really, really intentional at work and really, really accidental with yourself and how you lead yourself or your family or your community. So I wanna walk you through each one of these and I want you to have a little bit of an aha moment, a, an opportunity to marinate and stew in this whole idea of intentionality. So if intention is to have a plan to mentally decide what you're wanting to do, what are you doing with yourself? Okay, some of you, and when I mean self, it's health, physical, it's emotional, it's spiritual, it's the full component of your life. Where are you with yourself? How intentional are you leading yourself? If you're not leading yourself, what will happen is you'll have a tendency to implode when stress hits. 
If you're spending all your time focused on work or on organization, but not on self, when it gets really, really stressful, you will implode and everyone will see it. And you know a million people that have imploded. So accidental leadership means that you're accidentally le living. You wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, what are we gonna do today? Yeah, do my deal. You might be eating too late. You might be eating too much. You may, might be watching the wrong things. You might be, there's all types of things that are going in to your body that aren't helpful. Things that you're allowing because you're simply accidental. And it has taken to this moment in Creative Mornings for someone like me to go, hey, flip the switch for yourself. What's the vision for yourself? Not yourself at work, not yourself in the organization, yourself. What's your vision for yourself? Do you want to look, feel a certain way? Do you want to act a certain way? Do you want, what is it? Get a game plan and become intentional about that. I'm preaching. Make sense though? So that's your opportunity for yourself. So I realize um, I have a hard time recharging because I'm always working, I'm always thinking, I'm always dreaming and scheming. So I have little things that I create in the mornings. I have this little daily charge thing that I do with myself and I tell myself and remind myself who I am. I kind of wake myself up in the morning. Um, I decided not to, um, years ago, I don't look at email first thing in the morning because I don't want someone else's agenda to distract me first thing in the morning. Does that make sense? Why would you let someone else in with their detail, like all their things? So I get my mind focused and I start thinking, what am I doing today, what am I about, what am I, and I call myself up. I call myself up to a higher level. That's an example of what I do. Now, I have plenty of room to work. I've got a good 10 pounds that I'm wanting to shed and it's these blasted airplane trips and things like that that are really hard but that's not an excuse, I have to overcome that. So I'm actually working uh, on that, on a little game plan for myself, because I have a vision for myself, and I'm not currently at that vision. So I've got an opportunity to be intentional and create a game plan. That's an example of what you do with intentional. When you go to family, um, some of you are not uh, married, and so you have family or friends, okay? Family, friends, can be roommates, partners, uh, marriage, whatever, and, and whomever is in the family or friend circle, what's your intention? How intentional are you? What's the culture? We believe um, that leaders define culture. So if you want to define the culture and you want to be more intentional, so I can only give you my experience. So I am married. I have three kids. I was in the mall yesterday at this uh, with my daughter, who's right here. Addison, raise your hand. Uh, this is Addison. Come on, stand up for a second. You're going to love this. Yeah, this is Addison. So Addison, uh, it was so fun yesterday because I got, I, I got this like lady who was like, no way is she your daughter. You cannot be that old. Are you kidding me? You have a daughter that's 20? And I'm like, yes, thank you. We'll buy something here. And we did, we bought something. <laughs> Felt great. But my point is with, with my kids, I have a 20, 18, and 16 year old. And my wife and I decided years ago to um, be very, very intentional with our kids. And so uh, we do things that are different. Uh, I'm just going to give you some examples. When our kids turned seven, we took them to Disney with just one with mom and dad, which meant we get to go three times, they go once, which is great. <laughs> um, when they were 10, they got to go on a business trip with dad. Uh, Addison went to London. Uh, Will went to on a retreat in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, Kate met some uh, celebrities out in Hollywood. We had some really neat times. We all had, but they had their own moments with dad. When they're 13, we all go on a trip. When they're 16, they go with mom somewhere. So we had these things, and so our kids got a chance to look forward to it. And so it was just a, it was an intentional process. Uh, intentionality for looks like this, where our kids, when, when they're 13 years old, they all have to have a business. So we, or sorry, when they're 15 years old, they all had to have a business. When they were 13, we started talking about that. So Addison started her first company, um, Bliss is her name of her company. She does video vignettes, and she creates all types of really clever uh, videos and concepts for people. Uh, she's a junior at OBU. Um, so she's got a business, and we were talking about her business plan last night. What's her business plan for the next? Uh, Will has been selling, uh, doing car detailing. He now flips cars. He buys and sells cars. And so he's going to do like three or four a year of cars through college. And that's going to be his job. And then her youngest, she decided she wanted to have a job, not create a company. So we were working on that. So she works at Plenty. You guys know uh, Plenty. So those are just examples that we said, okay, our kids, we're gonna treat our kids like they're adults starting at 13 years old. 
because adolescence was made up anyway in the last 50 years. There was never, adolescence has just been a thing that's just been um, recent. So intentionally, we started doing things with our children. And uh, then when they turned 16, I create an apprenticeship plan for my kids. So for Addison, we had an apprenticeship plan. We had certain things that she did, but she is a creative, so I treat her different than my son, who's a guardian. And so my son has a long list, and we have all these things that he wants to accomplish because he likes to check things off. Addie's different than that. She doesn't need that. So we have different conversations. Well, with Will, um, we have all of these things. Will's going to OU. He's running, he's a decathlete. At, he's running track at OU. But he is a business major. He's got uh, IQ goals, EQ, and personality things that we go over. And there's a few books he hates to read, but there's books I've made him read. And, um, and then we have trips that we go to. We just got back from an adventure trip in Alaska. Uh, and then tomorrow, we go to, he's going with me. I'm speaking in Chile tomorrow and uh, Sunday. So I'll speak. I fly tomorrow to Santiago. He's going with me. And we have our last checklist of all of the things that he's had to work on. That's what intentional looks like for me. Doesn't mean that that needs to be what you do, but to go, what happened was we decided to get intentional with our kids and go, we're gonna treat them like an adult, so they're gonna be different. And I think if you're around them, you'd feel that, you'd experience it, I hope. But we're giving them a chance to see something differently. So we decided to move to London because we wanted that experience for them and we wanted them to get a European experience. So we spent two years there. You get where I'm going. We thought about it because we had a vision for our family. We have a vision for ourselves. The vision for our family created the intentional moments. It created an intentional plan. What's your vision for your family? Now take your, your organization. You may be working for someone, so you can't, if you work for someone, you can't share the vision because it's their vision. So, um, but you can play inside the vision. So for you to decide, does the vision of the organization you work for match your vision for who you are? Does it allow you to get where you want to go? If not, and I get it, there's certain jobs because you need a job that aren't there. If so, dig in, be a part of the vision, be a part of creating the vision with your leaders, the team. So for me, I basically created a company intentionally. So I started a company called Giant in 2002 to, to match my personality. It's really what it is. We use, um, it's basically, we're a global media and content development company that specializes in leadership transformation. So what we do is we have a consulting arm, we have a licensing division, and we have a digital platform. And so we create content. And it comes out, you might have heard Xcore, some people have been in Xcore or Accelerate, some of these programs that we have. But we basically, uh, our vision is to change the leadership landscape of the world. So we wanna raise up what we call liberators. People who are so intentional that they change their own leadership culture in every city and sector in the world. So the idea is, if I can help you change you holistically, there will be a ripple effect that will change everyone in your organization, in your family. It, and so what we do is we create a vocabulary and a language, and people start using it. It's around self-awareness. It's around emotional intelligence, personality, all those things. And it becomes like this, it, it just, it infects people in a good way. Good infection, is that such a thing? But what, what takes place is our business is intentional because we have a vision. And the vision is what all of us are aligned to. So if we're not aligned to that vision, then we've got to make some changes. And so we're constantly holding our vision up and we're seeing, are we being intentional to get to our vision? It's like a roadmap. So what does that look like for you, right? And then you get into the organization. Uh, team and organization for me are one and the same. I have a team, and so part of my team's here. And then uh, our team is you know, all over, the, scattered throughout Naples and Albuquerque and Atlanta and London and so forth. So we're kind of spread out and we're decentralized and I run everything off my cell phone, you know, which is just kind of weird that you can do that now. But in your world, what is your intent? How accidental are you? How intentional are you living? And then lastly, community. So what does your community look like? Community is where you live, where you eat, sleep, it's just, it's Oklahoma City, it's your neighborhood, it's your complex, it's your house, it's your work, it's community. What does your community look like? Uh, for me, I am completely accidental in my community in my neighborhood right now. 
and I know it, and it's driving me nuts, because here's why. We moved here, we bought a house online. Uh, we literally did, just bought it online, we came here, and we thought we'd be in a year because we're building uh, a modern farmhouse development called the Prairie at Post out in Arcadia. If anyone's seen it or looked at it, but it's theprairieatpost.com if you want to see it. It's 50 um, acres, 21 farmhouses. Uh, we've got eight built right now. We've got another six or so that are coming online. And it's just a, it's a creative opportunity. We had a vision for living, and we didn't see it in Oklahoma. And we're like, if we're going to move here, we want to create something. So my wife is the general contractor. She's actually there right now. She's working on it. And we're building it um, with the intent of showing people how to do long meals, dinner tables. We built a, a common space. We built a meeting house. We have an amphitheater. We have three bodies of water. And we're teaching people how to live differently from what we've experienced in Atlanta and London. And they go, that's what we want to do here in Oklahoma City. So that's just an example. But right now, I'm accidental. I'm intentional in that community that I'm not living in. But I'm accidental in my community now because I've thought, we're only going to be there a year. I don't want to invest in relationships. We've been there four years now. And I don't know my neighbors. And that's, that's a shame. That's an opportunity for me. So I'm not perfect. My point is, this is a mirror. And a mirror then points to it and go, what happens? How do I become intentional in every circle of influence? And if I'm intentional, my life will look different because I'm focused on the vision. So we have a vision for people. What's your vision for people? What's your vision for yourself? And what's your vision for your team, organization, or your community? Vision and intention go together. If you don't have a vision, which just means what do you want, well, now's your opportunity to stop and think about it. What do you want for yourself? That's an exercise. What do you want for your family or your friends? What do you want? for your team? What do you want for your organization? What do you want for your community? And if you'll spend time on it and you'll turn your dimmer switch on, then what will take place is there will be outcomes. You'll have options to do things and the options will create outcomes and outcomes will be unbelievable. Here's, here's the last thing I'll say. Most parents are accidental. Most parenting. We hope our kids grow up. We hope we have good teachers. We hope their grandparents are involved. We hope that they do well. We hope, we hope, we hope. But what would it look like to be intentional? Most work is accidental. Yeah, I'm just doing my deal, showing up. What would it look like to think proactively one step ahead? Taking all of the dreams and visions that you have in your head of the future in a blueprint and actually laying them out and, and getting a game plan and finding someone you trust to help speak into that game plan so that you can actually go, this is what I want to do. I have a long road ahead. Um, I'm, I'm 46 years old. My belief is that most influence happens between 55 and 70 years old. The most influential years of your life are 55 to 70. I've studied it. You can look it up. It's unbelievable. All the world leaders, average age is around 61, 50, 58 to 61. So for me, I'm like, OK, well, I've got nine years of preparation left. What planning do I need? until I'm 55. So that's how I'm living my life intentionally. I'm, I'm living it for 55 to 70. So therefore, if that's the case, if you believe that, count up. Do you have 30 years? Do you have 20 years? What is it that you need to do? Well, if you get intentional in these circles, it, it's much harder to live intentionally, but the ramifications are far greater. It's much, much easier to live accidentally, but the ramifications are horrible. So if you think about doing the intentional now at your age to see what happens when you're 55, that's where the glory is. So that's just an example of what intent looks like. I hope, I hope I've done the word justice, Hannah, for, uh, for the word int intent and intention. Intention being intentional to go, hopefully I've given you a framework or a thought on it for you to take all of the creative ideas and make them come alive means that you need to have a game plan. If you take all of these ideas, but you're accidental, then you probably won't experience the fruit. You probably won't never get to your dreams. They'll just probably still be in your head. Uh, uh, last thing, I have uh, written my fifth book. Okay, I'm just sending it out today. I meet so many people who say, oh, I so want to write a book. And they talk about it for 30 years. I so want to write a book. I'm like, okay, well, I've written five. Okay, you can do this. 
but you gotta have a game plan. You have to actually do something with it. So if you really wanna have a book, tie it into your vision and then figure it out. So don't despise small beginnings, do the work. And if you do the work, it will have great ramifications, so.